half in the bag. It's a masterpiece. Uh, Mr. Plankett? Where is he? Where is that old fuck? Here, this will do just fine. Mm. We'll use this knife to stab Plinkett and get all of his precious blood. From that blood, we'll extract those valuable antibodies to the Omega variant that his, his body has created. Mm -hmm. Because he has the Omega variant, the most deadly variant of the COVID virus there is. Absolutely, it's a plan that just can't fail. Oh my God, he got loose. What, what the f how did he get out of his restraints? I don't know, I had two layers of duct tape. Ah, oh, Christ, he could be anywhere by now. Uh, what are we gonna do? Well, I got this butcher knife. Maybe we could talk about Halloween kills. I guess. All right. We're here. The handle of the knife fell off. YJ, what are you doing? We're gonna read the intro. Why, I also have an intro. Oh, are we doing another dueling intro? Why, everybody, it's... Dueling, dueling intros! intros! Remember to like and subscribe and, and post a comment on whose intro you thought was better. Everyone voted for Jade's last time. Who wants to go first, then? Uh, I don't... Is yours on a piece of paper? Mine is on a piece of paper, Jay. So are my my notes. Most people have a notepad on their telephones or their their iPads. Uh, I have one on a note uh, piece of paper. Very extensive notes too. Yeah, I started to get drunker as the night went on. <laughs> Halloween Kills is the latest entry in the Michael Myers Choose Your Own Adventure franchise. In this thrilling and highly original new entry, Michael Myers murders a bunch of people on Halloween night. Wow. It's been 40 years. 40 years ago. He's been haunting this town for 40 years. 40 years ago. We've been haunted for 40 years. 40 years ago. It started 40 years ago. For 40 years, I've waited for him to return. Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. He dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. We're gonna end this tonight. And I'm the one that needs to kill it. Michael will be stopped tonight. He's been waiting for tonight. Tonight, tonight. Evil dies tonight. If they don't stop him tonight, maybe we'll find him tomorrow or next Halloween. In the same week, William Shatner is launched into space on top of a giant penis. Oh, Jesus. His likeness in the form of Michael Myers is launched on a streaming service called Peacock. Coincidence? I think not. I recall a time when Marge Simpson once tried to explain what a coincidence was to Homer. She said, Homer, it's just a coincidence. Like that guy named Anthony Michael Hall who stole your car stereo. Hey, speaking of Homer Simpson, it's like he wrote this script. I don't want you stalking anyone tonight. Jamie Lee Curtis and her hospital bed star in Halloween Kills, a new horror film from director David Gordon Green a director who has proven he's got the chops for comedy. I mean, horror! This sequel to a remake of two failed reboots from four films erased from an alternate timeline has an all-star cast too. Horror legend Judy Greer returns as Karen. And Katie Holmes returns as daughter. Also starring in the film is Danny McBride and Anthony Daniels as an offensive gay couple. Darlene Connor stars as the boyfriend. The old nurse from the first Halloween. The old sheriff from the first Halloween. Little unnamed girl from the first Halloween and others as the angry mob. I wish I could say Halloween kills thrills, but Halloween kills sucks. When describing a horror movie to your friends and you have to say, it's kind of like Titanic meets it's a mad, 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 mad world, it's not a good sign. <laughs> Jay, what did you think of Halloween Kills? I thought this movie 
sucked. Uh, I think we both liked the 2018 movie well enough. It was, it was fairly competent. competent uh, it was a reboot, uh, yeah. like a, re a refreshing of the timeline. Well, skipped, the, over, it skipped from the first one to this one. Yeah. Completely skip part two, which is where they introduce that Laurie and Michael are brother and sister. Right. Which, uh, H2O still incorporated that, and that was another reboot that ignored the sequels. How were they brother and sister in the first one? Like, she just lived in a different house? What? She got adopted. I don't remember the details. When you, when you get adopted, you live a block away from your birth parents? <laughs> How does that work? I, I, I never know. really understood that. No. Well, that was something John Carpenter just pulled out of his ass well, drunk one night. He said he wrote the script drunk because he had no ideas. Right. He, he <laughs> just saw uh, fucking Return of the Jedi or something? <laughs> That's, yes. Familiar relations and... I was yeah. talking about the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, oh, but yeah. So, 2018 has its problems, but for the most part, it, it got the character of Michael Myers better than a lot of the sequels. It stripped him down to what made him scary and intimidating in the original movie, which is that he's just a mindless killer with no motive and no reasoning with, and he just keeps moving and killing. And they did that really well. And this movie, I guess, that's the best thing about it is that Michael Myers is still. They don't try to add any backstory or any stupid shit. He's still just an endless killing machine. But they do add some kind of little thing because they're like, he has to go home. They, that, that's he has a, to stare out the window. He once stared out as a six-year-old. That, that's all they do. They don't introduce uh, extra siblings or dumb shit like that. So that's the best thing about the movie. The worst thing about the movie is that all the people that he kills are fucking awful. They're poorly written. Uh, there's no character growth or motivation beyond we have to stop Michael Myers. It's 90 minutes of characters saying the same fucking dialogue over and over. He's, we have to stop him tonight. Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! Protect He's infected your family. He's infected my family with grief and fear for 40 years. Because 40 years ago, when I was a kid, yeah. you protected me. 40 years ago! I remember him from 40 years ago. This man is a threat, and we need to stop him tonight. But now it needs to die. We're gonna hunt him down, and we're gonna put an end to this. And I'm the one that needs to kill it. He's gonna die tonight. Evil dies tonight. It's crazy because uh, the, the first, like, 20 minutes I was kind of enjoying because it is like a direct continuation off of the last one. Like, yeah. you know, it's not like Laurie goes to the hospital. I, I thought that was gonna happen. Like, the house burns and then, like, you know, the camera shows the basement and Michael's gone. Kind of like how the first one ended. Yeah. Laurie's in the hospital, then six months later, you know, she's recovering, she's at her uh, new house or something. And, and then, you know. And it's just the same thing. And then again. it's like the same thing again. But it was almost like the same, it's like the same night. It's a continuation of Halloween night. And, Which is um, what the original Halloween 2 did as well. Right. Also ended up in a hospital. Yeah, and there was a hospital element there. And then Halloween 4 had an angry mob tracking down Michael Myers. Yeah. It's almost like there's no ideas for this stupid franchise. They, they cherry pick things and kind of put them in this. But I was like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, what's going on? Like they're in the back of a pickup truck and Lori's bleeding. I'm like, oh, right, right, right. And then they, they cut. They're like, oh, well, we need some more characters. Mm -hmm. So let's um, bring Anthony Michael Hall in as... Kid. Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle. And then uh, how, Real Housewives lady? Uh, Lindsay Wallace was the little girl. Okay, the so, movie. so refresh me on this. Yes. In the first Halloween, Lori is babysitting two kids. Yeah. Well, her friend Annie Brackett pushes one of the kids off, so she ends up babysitting two. Okay, so there's only two kids. Right. And then we also introduce uh, uh, one of the kids that bullied Tommy Doyle in the beginning of Halloween when they pushed him down and he lands on his pumpkin and cr cracks it open, yeah. right? The kid with the red jacket. Mm -hmm. Bully. His name is? Uh, Lonnie. Lonnie. Lonnie has also grown up. Yeah. And so in, in, a, in a weird kind of scene that opens the movie-ish uh, is they're all at the local bar, karaoke night at the local bar, and Tommy Doyle brings the mood down <laughs> by going up on stage and I'm just picturing everyone being like, he does this every Saturday. Yes, and that's the thing, is this did not happen two years ago. Mm -hmm. This happened 40 years ago when he was 10 or 8 or 6. However old he was, yeah. And, and uh, I'm sorry, like, murder is bad. 
but a couple of people got murdered in 1978. Well, that's the thing in the, in the last one. In I the know. 2018 movie, they have the character who says that, and we're like, oh, that's nice that they brought that up. And this movie completely undermines that and has every single character in the town of Haddonfield obsessed with Michael Myers. Right. It's, it's insane. It, I think the idea with that bar scene is that Lindsay Wallace, uh, uh, Lonnie, uh, Real Housewives, oh, that's, that's the Lindsay Wallace, uh, Tommy Doyle, the, like this is something the they do nurse. every Halloween. Well, that's the, the weird thing. They all get together to commiserate or whatever and just kind of be together on this uh, anniversary of this tragic night. But they're also there with the elderly nurse that's in the opening of the original Halloween for five seconds. Her interaction with Michael Myers is that her car was stolen. Why does she know these people? Why is she friends with them? She's fucking 40 years older than them. We are, there are other characters. Marion, the nurse. It's so weird. It's so like desperate. Yeah. Like this franchise has nothing. So we'll bring back every single tiny character and they all know each other and they're all best friends and they all have nothing in their lives other than Michael Myers. That's where it breaks the r rules of reality a little because the, yeah, I like that line in the first one. I think it's one of the teenagers and he's like, he's a what? I mean, what, a couple people getting killed by one guy with a knife is not that big of a deal. Three people got stabbed in 1978? Mm -hmm. uh, well, fuck, I gotta hide under my desk every time there's a mass shooting at my school. He says, <laughs> he says a line like that, like, <laughs> where, where it's in, in comparison, like, three murders in 1978 with a butcher knife, and then today we deal with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Like, all these horrible things, like mass shootings and fucking terrorism and stabbings and all sorts of crazy shit. And the, the kid's like, we live in a totally different world now. And that seems quaint. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up, Dave. Shut up. And, uh, and, and it's I, fine. I thought it was a little too exaggerated, but it's fine that, that Laurie Strode is still like obsessed and traumatic, uh, traumatized by it. That's the whole point of that first movie is her dealing with her trauma, how it affects the rest of her family. Like that's fine for that character. Right. But the fact that every single person in now this town expanded is, is yeah. the, the Simpsons angry mob. To quote the Simpsons again, <laughs> Principal Seymour Skinner, there's no justice like angry mob justice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like an episode of The Simpsons. It is, yeah. Meets the Titanic. We'll get into that. Meets, <laughs> it's a mad, 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 mad world. In my opinion, the whole world has gone mad. Wacko. The want and destruction of private property. Guys, you're getting out of line. I'm not getting out of bed. All I can take. I win. We're going to have to kill him. <laughs> if ever this mad, 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 The only horror elements are a handful of brutal murders. Yeah. That, that are, that's like, hey, for a horror movie, okay, they didn't shy away from gore and stabbings and whatnot, but. But uh, if you're trying to kind of capture. I'm not scared by the villain. That's, that's yeah. the thing is, it's not scary. It's just like blunt and brutal and like mean spirited, which is, yeah. which is fine for a movie like this. I like the moment there's the elderly couple. David, Gord David Gordon Green does a stupid thing in both these movies where he introduces characters solely to get killed off immediately. And it's like, oh, to make you care about them, they'll have some sort of quirk. And this does that. The last movie did that with like the, the dad. In the last movie, there's the dad and the son in the truck and the, the son was talking about wanting to dance. And then later there's the cops in the car talking about sandwiches for five minutes. Right. In this movie, we have an older couple, older married couple that are playing with a toy drone. Yes, the lady has a toy drone. And it just goes on with her playing with this drone. And then they talk about eating Cheez-Its and drinking wine. And then Michael Myers shows up and kills them. Right. But, so, but the, the mean spiritedness that I liked was he stabs her in the throat with like a broken uh, fluorescent tube. And, and she has to sit there, still alive, she can't move, just watching her husband get knife after knife in his back. And Michael it's Myers like, is testing out which knife is the best. And yes. I, I thought that was the best scene in the whole film. That, moments like that work, yeah. but that's that's all that works. In movie logic, you have the lady playing with the little tiny drone, and then, you know, I guess I would have rolled my eyes at this too, but later on in the film, Someone has a bigger drone with like a camera on it. I know how to fly that drone. And, <laughs> and then they're like look, flying it around and it has a heat sensing mode. Mm -hmm. Beep. There's Michael Myers, he's in the woods. He's heading towards you, he's heading towards you. You know, she's flying the drone and that, that's like, what, that's what they call a setup and payoff. Yeah, this and movie has nothing they, like that. He's just playing with a drone, a little tiny drone for no reason. 
other than it's it like gives a them false something setup. quirky to do. It's yeah. a false setup to no payoff, which is fine to pull the, the rug out from under you every now and then, but I was just like, okay. It didn't have an effect. Mm. It didn't have a purpose yeah. other than to make you go, oh, okay, I guess they died. <laughs> We've talked about this to death, but Halloween and other movies kind of similar to it are a one movie thing that only works once mm -hmm. because there is no meat to it. There's yeah. no, unless you go into schlock territory. See, that's, that's which, kind of- Which is why some of the sequels, as bad as they are, are more entertaining to watch than this movie. This movie's oh, just kind yeah. of like miserable. Michael Myers is just an unstoppable force of evil that has no remorse or plan or, you know, and that's the, the creepiness in the first one. Mm. But like, say if in this, we were like, oh, well, what do we do? Well, I don't know, they, they, like you said, desperation. They dredge up like every possible character. But you know, there are a lot of other people. Yeah. Even though 40 years later, half of them would be dead, half of them would have moved to other cities and states, you know, mm. uh, not cared at all. I need to speak with Sheriff Brackett. Well, then you'll have to travel about 3,000 miles south of here. What? Bracken retired back in 81. Moved to St. Petersburg. Not sit around this small town forever for 40 years, every Halloween going, ooh, we're gonna pay our respects to the three people that died 40 years ago. Like, no one's gonna do that. Yeah. It's unrealistic, and then it makes it seem like the events of Halloween happened like yesterday. But um, like if Michael Myers left Haddonfield, he just, he's, oh, here's a come, to, I'm gonna hitchhike. and. Here comes a truck, I better take off my spooky mask. <laughs> then he gets in the truck and then he drives and goes to, you know, Jason goes to Manhattan or whatever. <laughs> you know, he, he goes to, I don't know, he goes to Las Vegas. Has there ever been a slasher movie set in Las Vegas? I don't think so. There was, Leprechaun went to Vegas, but that doesn't count. That's complete schlock. Not a slasher movie. Yeah. I, I, there's really not much you can do with that. I guess. Uh, other it's than that's just an like, interesting backdrop. A, a, a complete ju a juxtaposition of, of like, a scary Michael Myers and uh, a casino, a casino. I don't know. That's a challenge right there. That's a challenge. Michael Myers goes to Vegas. What happens in Vegas dies in Vegas. <laughs> Throw some taglines in there. Jackpot. <laughs> I, I was thinking he really needs like one-liners at this point. Yeah, he why needs not? to start talking because mm. when he was like smashing someone's head against the car, I, I just kept picturing Freddy saying some kind of like silly <laughs> line. Here's your first course in driver's head. <laughs> driver's head. Driver's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. any hack writer could figure this out. <laughs> Uh, Michael Myers goes. No, to he's pure evil. He's <laughs> evil. He's for 40 years, he's been wanting to start. He's evil. We have to stop evil. Every character talks like Dr. Loomis. Tell me, the hell are we dealing with? Evil. Evil dies tonight. They all constantly talk about the evil. We have to stop the evil. Like, Dr. Loomis does that. That's his thing. But now every character talks like him, and it sounds silly. Donald Pleasant's kind of, it sounds silly from Donald Pleasant's kind of, but he makes it work because he's a good actor. Mm -hmm. But he, just having all these random actors delivering those same type of goofy lines well, doesn't for, work. For no reason, Anthony Michael Hall's kind of like the Dr. Loomis. I, kind of, he's like the one who's leading the charge. Yeah. And he's, it's just because he was the kid at the house. Wasn't Paul Rudd the kid at the house? In Halloween 6, yeah. That's a race from this timeline, though. That doesn't count. Oh, okay. That's all. It would have been great if they got Paul Rudd back. Then you get some humor in there. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rudd. Get someone with with a little bit of uh, charisma, because Anthony Michael Hall sucks in this movie. He's got one note the whole movie. He's just constantly like angry and brooding. The the only uh, the only person that comes across like a like a relatable, likable human being is Judy Greer. Yeah. She's the only one. She's like carrying this movie on her back. Yeah, and then the Laurie Strode character is just sort of like sits in a hospital bed and makes yeah. trailer lines for the entire thing. Yeah, lays and then has some kind of rekindled romance with the, the cop. Yeah, that 
I mean, it's a mess. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start yeah. in this, like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, what do you do? I don't know, how do you continue this story? Uh, I, I, it, 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 it's a brand name, like IP thing. It's like a McDonald's meal. Just like you, you, you see it, it's like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. I have another one. Which like there's no art, artistry to it. It's just, it's just fucking awful. Which would be fine if it was at least entertaining. I mean, I love the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Those movies are all garbage, but they're super entertaining. And this movie takes itself so seriously. It's so like, like by the end, Laurie Strode has this long monologue, and it's just so like up its own ass legacy that mm. it really has to do with the nature of evil and so like self-serious and it does have like the last movie kind of had a theme of like trauma and mm -hmm. uh jamie lee curtis was comparing it to like the me too movement and interviews and stuff and then with this movie this is the most embarrassing thing uh, this movie was shot like two and a half years ago, something like that, 2018 or 2019. But now in interviews, she's saying, talking about like the theme to make it sound like a bigger, more important movie than it is. Uh, she's comparing the mob justice in this to Black Lives Matter protests. It takes on what happens when trauma infects an entire community. And we're seeing it everywhere with the Black Lives Matter movement. We're seeing it in action. And Halloween Kills, weirdly enough, dovetailed onto that, preceded it. That seems like not only a bad idea, but kind of tasteless <laughs> and stupid. I don't, I don't <laughs> quite get the connection. The mobs, it's mob justice. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, we, I guess we should go there. Like I started to get like political fumes, I guess, off it. Which like, is, I mean, which is, Fine, as long as the movie's good. But. You, you, there's a time and place for for political metaphors and stuff in a Halloween movie. Uh, it's a not franchise it. where the the killer uh, shoves fluorescent tubes into people's throats. Yeah, it's not really it. Yeah, but but it was like I don't know uh, all the there one there is one line where someone's like the uh, the cops like you failed us like you you, you, you it has to be us up to us now the sheriff's department no no no, no 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 sheriff we will not calm down we have watched your department fail fail tonight this is Haddonfield this is our town but that gets muddled too because then when Laurie Strode is in the hospital room coincidentally the cop kind of love interest of her it gets put in the same room as her and he he talks about like you know I I, I could have shot him 40 years ago I should have shot him and this is a cop talking about shooting an unarmed man, and Laurie Strode is like agreeing with him. Right. Like, well, that kind of muddles your whole message, then, doesn't it? In terms of like what they're trying to say and what the message actually, how it actually comes across, it's muddled. Yeah. Uh, it's like it wasn't thought out. The scene you're referencing is Michael Myers is he has a he's choking the other cop. Mm -hmm. He has like I don't know he's yeah he's choking him. Yeah, he's got him right in front he of him. He doesn't have his knife, mm -hmm. so Michael Myers doesn't even have a weapon on him. And he's standing there with the gun, kind of like, you know, when you have a hostage and you have someone like a cop, like trying to kill the hostage taker, mm -hmm. usually the hostage taker will have some kind of weapon that will inflict instant death or damage to the person they're holding, like knife at the throat or gun to the head, right? And Michael Myers has neither. So really all the cop could have, should have done is just walked right up to Michael Myers. <laughs> Put the, Walked well, up to the side of him. And and put the gun right to his fucking forehead. Because yeah. choking takes a, a while to kill your victim. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a minute. So he, he had plenty of time to walk up. I mean, and then you can argue, oh, well, the character was, was frazzled and didn't sure. quite know what to do. But, but then you have the people, the one guy's like, you, you, the cops, you failed us. You, you, you didn't do your job, blah, blah, blah. It's up to the people now. It's up to community policing. And, and then, and then I started to think, like, oh my God, is this about Trump? <laughs> and, and then, because there is a, there is a scene where, like, they're they're yelling, "Evil dies tonight." <laughs> And it's very reminiscent of USA. You, and, and, I'm, and then there's a mob 
that's chasing some poor, like, uh, insane asylum guy. Another who, guy that escaped who when is, Michael was Myers did, on yeah. the bus in the first one who escaped. Yeah. And he's, like, confused and, and crazy, and he, he doesn't know why all these people are chasing him. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you have the angry mob. They're, like, breaking down the doors to this hospital and going up staircases. And I'm like... It's comical. I'm like, is, are they trying to do a thing about, like, what all the hillbillies stormed the Capitol? <laughs> like, is this about is this about politics? But this I, was made before that, which is interesting. I know, and, that, and that's, like, where I'm surprised. When you said Black Lives Matter, I'm surprised Jamie Lee Curtis didn't, didn't swap her story out to say this is a you know, anti-Trump movie. Like, this is about, like, when... Maybe they'll when do a, that with the next one. When a bunch of crazy uh, townsfolk, uh, small townsfolk get all riled up by, a, by a, like, a guy who's chanting, Yeah. Uh, they should have made Michael Myers mask orange, for Christ's sake, <laughs> instead of white. Um, but, but uh, and I'm like, what are they trying to say? Yeah. Mob, uh, mob justice is, is not effective but i guess it's not because at the end they they mob justice the hell out of michael myers and he survives it well they what is the message and again i want to remind everybody it was pre black lives matter movement black lives matter movement black lives matter movement black lives matter movement That aspect of it, the, the part where they start chasing the, the other uh, crazy guy that's been let loose and he's confused and doesn't know what hap what's going on, that part is like where conceptually I think there could have been an interesting idea there, but it's completely flubbed in the execution, which is the idea of how people can get so kind of blinded by rage and getting worked up. It's like Twitter. That, that whole scene is like uh, like a it's metaphor Twitter. for Twitter. Yeah. Where it's like, we're all angry, we're all angry, and it doesn't even matter if they're aiming their anger in the right direction. And then it pushes someone to kill themselves. And, and then, then it then pushes that guy to kill himself. And that's when, just to make sure we understand what's happening, elderly, confused Sheriff Brackett goes, he's turning us into monsters. Like, yep, we got that. Now he's turning us into monsters. We got that by the angry mob running up the stairs and pushing a guy to commit suicide. We don't need you to literally say it. Now he's turning us into monsters. Ugh, this movie's so stupid. It's a masterpiece. It, it is, it is a, incredibly stupid. <laughs> Uh, it's like, it's like, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, whoa, uh. It's a masterpiece. Bah, you, you have a, a horror villain who's not scary, who has seemingly no purpose whatsoever, mm -hmm. which is scary in itself if done correctly. But then you add all those other layers yeah. on top of it of, of like all these interpersonal relationships. Tons and of characters. So many characters. Too many that, characters. And that's the other thing too, like with that line, the he's turning us into monsters and so much... Half of the movie is like exposition and trying to catch you up on not just stuff that happened in the original movie, but stuff that happened in the 2018 movie, which is like the last one. We know it just happened. So I forgot it, it all. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's like, and, and if that wasn't enough, then we have to make uh, 1978 recreation flashback scenes to set up the backstory for more characters because we need more characters in this movie. And we brought back all of those people. So Kyle Richards, who played, right. you know, the little girl, Lindsay, came back. We have the character of Tommy. We are, there are other characters. That's it's just like look. exhausting. That stuff was kind of fun. Like technically, after, it was it was really well done. After Michael Myers escaped, like what happened? Like he had a he walked down an alley and. But again, it undermines the first movie. The ending of the first movie is so brilliant and so perfect. It undermines the first movie. But, uh, Where have you been <laughs> the last 40 years, Jay? 40 years ago. 40 years ago! But if, we're, if this is a clean slate, if we're ignoring all the sequels, and this is a refresh, which is the whole idea, um, to then go back and be like, oh, here he is, you know, after the end of the first movie, his body wasn't there. That's the whole scary thing, is like Michael Myers, he's still out there. He could be anywhere. And it's like, oh, he just wanted to go home. Why did Michael Myers go to Laurie Strode's cabin? In the last movie? It was like a convoluted series of events where it was the evil doctor. I complained about this with that movie, too, because he has no reason to go after her. So it's like the doctor pushed him in that direction. 
which they even mentioned that in this movie where the, the other cop is like, no, Laurie, it's not about you. He's not after you, um, which is true. That's the case. So it was like a, uh, it was like a twist. Yeah. Kind of like a twist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that twist just dug him into a hole. Yeah. Wrote him into a hole. <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking like, yeah, this is, this is the time of the show where we say, well, what would we do? What do you do? The, the, the reality bending of all these random characters from the first one, all hanging out, friends, going out on Halloween night and drinking, a, a 96-year-old nurse who once got her car stolen by Michael Myers, who would probably either be dead or live, living on a different city. And also had no connection to Haddonfield. She was like a nurse at the Smith Grove Sanitary, yeah, right. which is whatever. Why not move to the town where you, there, the murders took place, where the guy who stole your car murdered people? <laughs> That's what I would do. But 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 you, you take that, you, you get rid of all that, get rid of all these people. Yes. Right. We are, there are other characters. And you have Laurie Strode end up in the hospital on Halloween night. Michael Myers. Uh, how about a big storm rolls? In? You start with credits. You have a nice little simple credit sequence. Do, 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 and, and then, oh, 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 they had flaming pumpkins in the beginning of this, right? Yeah. You have pumpkins with candles on all the doorsteps, right? Okay. Storm rolls into town. This is good. Thunderclaps. Kids are out trick or treating. Parents are looking around. It starts to rain. Instead of flaming pumpkins. We have the rain extinguishing candles and pumpkins on porches all around Haddonfield. Rain has ruined Halloween. Rain has also extinguished the fire at Laurie Strode's cabin. <laughs> Michael Myers' hand busts out of the debris. He's free. Laurie Strode gets taken to the hospital. They do. She's laying there recuperating. The storm's coming into town, and we have a nice, simple movie where our characters are in, everyone goes in their houses and locks the doors. Maybe a couple murders along the way. Michael says, bitch, you locked me in your cellar and lit the house on fire. I now have motivation to come and find you mm -hmm. and your stupid daughters, <laughs> granddaughters or daughters or whoever they are. Yeah. And you locked me in the basement and lit the house on fire. That's my motivation, done. I'm gonna find you. You're probably at the hospital because I stabbed you in the belly. I'm gonna make my way to the hospital through this rainstorm. The whole movie is raining. Michael Myers in the rain outside your window. That's Spooky. Creepy. Yeah. Never seen that. Bust, psh, bust in. I gotta get a new butcher knife. It's a couple scenes, makes his way. Eventually, hospital power is a little sketchy, starts to go out. Mm -hmm. Hospital, it's a skeleton, skeleton staff at the hospital, and barely anybody's there. Nice and spooky. When was the last time you watched Halloween 2? I, I, it's been a very long That's time. That's basically what you're describing, aside from the rainstorm. He makes his way to the hospital, there's a limited staff. Well, that's a spooky movie! Exactly! Like, I, for all the problems, that, like, I don't like the sister twists, but Halloween 2 is a perfectly effective, atmospheric little movie. But like it, it doesn't have nine thousand characters. I don't know what all the ham-fisted yeah. political subtext. Right, that's the crazy part. That's the that's the off-putting stuff. Is the 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 madness mm -hmm. um, it, with a hospital? You can do by the time you get to the hospital, like that's your third act. You do you have all sorts of great set pieces in a hospital, like you have elevators. You kill people in elevators. You have the morgue with the frozen bodies and. You have all sort. You have doctor equipment and mm -hmm. saws and uh, uh, drugs and you know, you, like Michael Myers injects somebody with like fucking morphine or something. They're like, oh shit! And they're trying to like fall down the hallway. And he's, doo, 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 doo. you need those scenes. So we ne we didn't have this one shot where Michael Myers is just like, dong, just slowly walking towards. It's like it's just like brutal and quick. Mm -hmm. There's nothing creepier than when Laurie Strode looks out her window and sees him standing by the laundry. Yeah. That lack of movement. Thank you. Lack of movement. He's a ghost. He's, a, he's the boogeyman. He's not, I mean, yes, he's strong and, and he kills people brutally, but. Especially for a 60 year old man. They've turned, kind of turned him into Jason mm -hmm. and, and it's all wrong. And yes, there might be comparisons to Halloween too, but hey, if you're rebooting, 
just take take Halloween 2, the premise, and just do it a little better, yeah. and have four or five set pieces in the hospital and end it on the roof of the hospital where he pushes her off or he pu she pushes him off. Don't do the gas explosion again. Yeah. Uh, you know, do something a little different, but but get rid of all these fucking characters. Like, I, I, I was, think that's what they, they were worried about it being too, like just simple generic slasher. So they thought this would be a way to make it feel different and fresh. Oh my God, uh, uh, simple generic scary is the essence of the first Halloween movie. Oh, I understand that. It's a mad, 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 mad world <laughs> is not. Or, or I, I was joking, I, uh, uh, we watched this together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was, I was like joking, making comparisons to the Titanic because it, it felt like the, the, the Titanic starts to sink, right? And, and Jack, Jack is, is handcuffed to the pipe in, in like the, 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 the cop's office or something, right? There's water coming in and Rose rescues him and they come up on deck, right? And, it, and it's still at that point where it's like, people don't really know what to do. Yeah. There, some people are like, ah, oh, it's a great night. And some people are running and knocking people over. And it's a little bit chaotic, uh, but not really. And then it just, things just get worse and worse and worse as the ship starts going down and people start realizing there aren't enough lifeboats. Yeah. And then people are like falling down the stairs and pushing each other. And, and that's what the hospital scene looked like. And, and I just kept saying like, are there enough lifeboats? It just felt like I was watching like a, not a horror movie. I was watching like, and then everyone's just like running around the town and getting into cars and uh, that's what reminded me of it's a mad, mad, <laughs> mad, mad world. We gotta stop Michael Myers somehow. Come on everybody, mob justice. <laughs> Whoever gets the Michael Myers first wins the gold. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like what? this is not a horror movie. This is a farce. This is, this is, I don't know what this is. Sometimes people forget that what goes up must come down. All of which proves very little except they're nuts. Now he's turning us into monsters. It's a man. I wrote down Shaun of the Dead. I don't know why. Maybe the bar. The bar? All the people running out of the bar. I thought they were going to hole up in the bar. They do have, uh, in Shaun of the Dead, they're at the bar and they set up the, 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 the gun that's above the bar. Yeah. And here... Oh, it's a baseball bat. Here we have a baseball bat. Some random guys talking about how it was his dad's. Now it's his old huckleberry or old something. Hickory. Whatever it's called. And then it's like, oh. And then Mike, uh, Anthony Michael Hall just takes the bat. And that's it. Old Hickory. That's sort of old Huckleberry, I think is it's what it's called. It's Old Hickory. I don't, I think. Not Huckleberry. It's and you don't, it's made of wood. Hickory is a kind of I wood. I understand that, but it's not called Old Hickory in the movie. Yes, it I'm is. I'm almost positive. Are you gonna try and look up the name of the baseball bat? No, 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 no. Um, old Hickory is a reference to something. It's like the name of a, nickname of a president. Hold on. Yep, Andrew Jackson. Jackson's toughness and determination reminded his troops of a firmly rooted hickory tree, earned him the name Old Hickory. So yes, it's not Huckleberry. I remember fuck having him. a weird name. You like fuck up. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of weird names. Oh uh, yes. I, uh, oh well, uh, we'll talk about that now. Okay. Our favorite actor in this film is Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> uh, in the original film, uh, P.J. Souls, and a, a character named Bob. They're, they're having little sexual times. Mm -hmm. And Bob goes up to get a glass of water or something and Michael Myers kills him and Michael Myers returns with a ghost sheet over his head and Bob's glasses over the ghost sheet, one of the creepiest images in all of horror films. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we cut to, a, there's a photo of PJ Souls there's, somewhere, like a victim photo maybe? There, it's when they're at the bar and the news is coming out that these killings are happening. And they're like, this is similar to the killings from 1978. So they show a photo of PJ Souls. They show a photo of Bob. 
but it's a photo of young Bob Odenkirk, I guess. I, he's credited in the film as Bob Odenkirk. So I, I, did a, I looked it up, and I guess that is him. Okay. I, I don't know if they couldn't track down the guy that played Bob in the original movie, so they just threw that in as an inside joke or it something. It must be, considering that the co they're Danny McBride comedy. Oh, comedy people. Must yeah. be that, yeah. I wanted to talk about Zesty Popcorn, uh, the sub of the set design in this. <laughs> okay. Uh, is bizarre. Like, like a, a horror film should be very, like, atmospheric, visually stripped down, sure. you know? I mean, it depends on what kind of horror movie you're making, but uh, the, the bar had a popcorn machine. Words? Oh, yeah. Remember we in the last Best of the Worst with sandwiches? Mm -hmm. um, when the cop is talking about armed robbery, and right over his shoulder it says sandwiches. Oh, yes. And then we made a joke. I'm, th I'm thinking about sandwiches this whole time. It's distracting. Excuse me, I'm going to get one of those sandwiches. <laughs> I've been thinking about these sandwiches all week. <laughs> the zesty popcorn is in the same bit where you see Bobo and Kirk on the TV. It's oh. like it's like uh, Dolly now. Yes, on the that's TV. why zesty popcorn. <laughs> and then and then uh, uh, the uh, uh, what's her face? Uh, uh, Judy Greer is talking to a doctor or her daughter at the hospital, and they go into like some kind of room. And there's a poster that's like something about glaucoma is on the wall. And like hospitals and movies should be like fairly simple and, and, and stripped down. Oh, they go. And then, then there's another scene where they go into, yeah, it's like an exam room where it says glaucoma. And it's like glaucoma. I think it's when she's talking to like the town uh, mayor or something, the guy in the cowboy hat. Then there's a different scene where they go into like the, the little kid's room, a place where you put kids to play. Yes. Right? And, and I think this, this is obviously intentional. On the wall, there's a creepy bunny, mm -hmm. and it has sort of like a white Michael Myers-esque face, and it's holding a carrot mm -hmm. that is very much shaped like a big butcher knife. And it was like, thematically, like I get what they were doing, they were trying to have like, but it, it just doesn't work. That, those kind of like, that kind of set design doesn't work in a Michael Myers movie. It sure. needs to look 100% there can't be any kind of like cartoonish uh, asides or visuals or we can't see zesty popcorn. <laughs> can never see those words in the Halloween picture. <laughs> or little tiny toy drones. Or yeah. All that stuff rips you out of the ultimate intent of the movie, which is a, a man, the shape, who is just a relentless a killer. Relentless killer and, who will stop at nothing to get you mm -hmm. and will bust through the, the closet door and look around and then go like this when it's confused. The fucking scary shit from the first one, all those visuals. Yeah. John Carpenter, man, rest in peace. He knew exactly what the fuck he was doing with that. Yeah. Don't know, I just know it, like there were so many like small odd choices uh, and, and then the script was just like this big, like someone threw a bomb on it <laughs> and it exploded and they rearranged all the pages from 25 other scripts and shoved it all together and hoped it worked. It was totally fucking baffling how you could screw up a, a, a Michael Myers movie. I mean, I know they have in the past, but. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Like you have a fresh start. Mm -hmm. The last one was pretty good. It's the. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. That's the, yeah. the, I mean, the A24 movies, I know those are a little more kind of artsy, but just that slow pace, that ominous atmosphere, yeah. like that's what, that's all you need for a Halloween movie. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. It's about atmosphere, it's about, uh, it's not so much about the kills, but about the, the, the fear, mm -hmm. the, the dread. The anticipation, that's why I don't never really think of the original movie as a slasher movie. No. It, I know it's like, it kind of what, started the slasher trend, but that movie itself is more about, yeah, the, the lead up to, right. you know, discovering a body, falling out of a closet, or looking across the street, and there's someone just staring at you. It's so simple. Right, yes, that's, that's the best uh, way to, to surmise all this, K-I-S-S. -S. Mm -hmm. um, and this was the opposite of that. So, would you recommend Halloween <laughs> Kills? Oh, God, no. For a franchise that's known for having lots of terrible sequels, this might be one of the worst. Yeah.
Which is really amazing. Right. A modern movie is worse than like Halloween 5. <laughs> we both know he's alive. But you know where he is. Michael. Halloween. Is, it, is Halloween 5 the one that ends with the mask landing on the ground? That's Halloween 6. Yeah, that one was pretty bad too. <laughs> uh, Most of them are pretty bad. I, I wonder if you go back and watch 5 and 6 if you're just like, these are brilliant. After the, watching this trailer, I, I mean, they're at least simpler and more in spirit of the original movie than this one is. This is one of those things where it's like I, I wouldn't even recommend it, even if it's free. I mean, I, I signed up to Peacock uh, so I could watch uh, the, the fucking fucking Office and uh, uh, AP Bio, the mm -hmm. continuation of AP Bio, and I'm like, and that's how oh, Halloween Kills is on there. It's free. I say, even if you have Peacock, don't watch it. Don't bother. Just don't waste your time. It'll frustrate you more than anything. Yeah. And it's not scary. And it, and it ends with kind of a cliffhanger, a lead into the next movie. I don't give a single shit what happens in the next one no. after this. No. Uh, I, no. 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 This stuff is so tired. Yeah. And especially, not just like with this movie, but it, it does that thing that like, I don't know, Jurassic World and all these movies do is where there's... The uh, the characters in the movie and the movie itself has such a like reverence for every single little minute thing from the original movie, where it's annoying and it's like just I don't know, it's like uh, I, I'm just waiting for that new Ghostbusters movie and how every little thing from the original movie, which is a, an irreverent comedy, they're gonna treat with this like uh, glowing nostalgia and it's all super important and meaningful. It's like, no, it's just a bunch of goofy crap. That's all it has to be. Egon had a dream. He had a mission. Yeah. But my prediction, that Ghostbusters movie, there's going to be a CGI ghost Egon in it, and it's going to be the most embarrassing thing ever. It's going to happen. Will it be... It won't be funny, it'll be... No, it'll uh, be an emotional heartstring. Heart yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be. It'll be like a like a like a bad CGI Harold Ramis. Because the whole family in that movie is like his yeah. daughter and granddaughter or whatever. So they, yeah, they're going to have a moment to, to say the, goodbye to Egon. You have the power within you to build your own proton pack. <laughs> I don't know how, great grandpa. I don't know how. You you can do it. You're a Spangler. It'll be like the new Skywalker. <laughs> But I don't know how to do it, Grandpa. <laughs> I can do it. They will have a scene where they test the little girl tests out the proton pack in an alleyway behind a Chinese restaurant, <laughs> and, and she flies up in the air and, and farts. Hey, at least that movie was trying to just be a comedy. It's terrible, but I see the trailers for this new one, and it's like, oh, we're doing a wistful. Nostal it's like things are, they're, they're trying to make you like nostalgic for things that weren't ever like emotional in the first place. Yeah, you watch Ghostbusters and you know Bill Murray has no idea what's going on. <laughs> it doesn't give a shit. He's just saying random things. Yeah. He's high on cocaine and he's just saying random things and he has no idea what movie they're making. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a lot of the charm. Yeah. And, and yeah. But let's not judge the new Ghostbusters movie before it comes out, Jay. Okay? I, I'm basing it on the trailer and my prediction that there will be a CGI Egon. Okay. But, but not just that. But, like, they go to the Myers house and that recreated 70s stuff. Because as that mentioned in the original movie that there's, like, a dead dog on the ground out of frame. And Donald Pleasance is like, he got hungry. He got hungry. And so in this movie, there's a wide shot. He's like, there's a dead dog on the... It's like, we got to see the dead dog. We go upstairs. We got to see the, the window that got smashed by the gutter that, that slammed into it in the jump scare in the original movie. Just like all the, the, that stuff where it's like, none of that matters. They, they can't, That's not what makes a movie. They can't take that bold step forward into new territory. Yeah. They have to just like wallow in nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Michael Myers needs to get into the cab of a truck and head to Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's where the franchise needs to go. Or he needs to storm the Capitol with a bunch of Trump supporters. <laughs> So if anyone ever storms the Capitol again, someone just wear a Michael Myers costume while you do it. Just, sure. just for the fun of it. <laughs> Come on, what a great visual. <laughs> Why not? Fuck everything. <laughs>